Hello again everyone, it's me Madam Cub, and I am back at you all with yet another video. Today's video is a special seasonal story time. I've had lots of you guys asking me, Madam, are you going to be doing any more stories about scares from the haunt you work at? And you know what? I think it's about time for one of those. So for today, I'm going to be telling you about some of the funniest, most memorable, and even worrying scares I've had so far. It's only our second weekend in at this point but while I'm recording it. I'm sure it'll be the third by the time this goes live, but we've, as of me telling this, this is only uh, two weekends. All the stuff happened in the first two weekends. So that just gives you an idea of how many crazy things happen when you work at a haunted house. So on opening weekend, I started out playing a plague doctor. We have a really cool scene that's set in medieval London, and uh, I can't give too many details because I'm, I'm not allowed to give away all the secrets, but let's just say it's a pretty impressive set, and the plague doctor costume is pretty accurate and imposing. Now personally, I've always found plague doctors really cool looking, but uh, I, I came to find out pretty quickly that a lot of people are very, very unnerved, if not terrified of the aesthetic. All the better for a haunt, I guess. So in this room, there was a plague victim and me, the doctor. Lots of places to hide and pop out and have fun. And it always works good when there's two people because you have this dynamic where one can get the attention and the other can get a scare. And uh, it, it tends to it tends to work pretty well as, as it did this night. Pretty early in the evening, we had a whole group that was like in the conga line train, like following each other through. And I jumped out of where I was hiding and I got every single one of them in that group to do a high pitched scream. And they keep staring at me and they're starting to calm down because, okay, the, the scare in the room is over. Let's stare at the details. Oh, that's a really cool costume. They didn't realize that my little plague victim was hiding around another corner. And when she jumped out and got them, you know those little metal ball things that like psychiatrists and doctors have in their office where you, you know, they knock each other with that momentum? Picture that with human heads. So uh, that, that was a good way to start the show. They got so scared, they just flew into each other and it was boom, 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 boom. They almost all fell down. They went to their, like they, they dropped like they were almost gonna go to their knees, but they recovered. They recovered, but it was close. I encountered Something that is interesting to note about the Plague Doctor costume is because I am a taller person when I have that full costume on, there it's the way it fits and everything. You cannot really tell my gender under there. So most people, because of my size, seeing that costume and traditionally Plague Doctors were males, they automatically assumed I was a dude. So I got a whole lot of wannabe tough guys that wanted to fight the doctor. I've had enough of this dude. Get away from me, man. Get away from me, man. What, what are you gonna do? Box an actor in a theatrical production? Be gone. One little hash-slinging slasher came at me going, F you, dude, F you. Because I had the sheer audacity to walk around a corner and beckon for them to come and he's had to scream like a little girl. And you know, if, if, you, if you make him scream like a child, some of these wannabe tough guys, you know, there's nothing wrong with screaming in a haunted house. You're paying to get scared. There's nothing wrong with screaming. But because I made him scream in front of his girlfriend, he took it personally and he began throwing a flurry of obscenities at me. I mean, mind you, I didn't need to get security involved because he kept going through, but dude was so mad that I scared him. That's always fascinating. There were also a really bizarrely high number of children going through the haunt that after I scared them, they would scream and then they would stop and go, I have you in Fortnite. Okay. So that's how I learned that apparently there is a Plague Doctor skin in Fortnite because I heard probably a total of 50 children that night happily exclaim after after getting scared that that's their they have that in Fortnite or that's their favorite Fortnite skin. Oh my gosh, do a dance, do a dance. I'm getting too old for this. What, what's with the Fortnites? I thought it was the Minecraft, I guess it's Fortnite now. Another particularly interesting encounter, which makes me wonder about this guy's past traumas, uh, I just walk stealthily around the corner at them, because I've, I've got another scare like set up, planned, and ready to go. He sees me, he comes into the room, he sees me, he flattens against the wall. 
mind you, the, the rest of the group, all the girls, they're, they're fine, they just keep walking, but this guy flattens against the wall, refuses to go forward while I am there looking at him, and just keeps repeating over and over again, I don't do beaks! I don't do beaks, man! No, 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 no! I don't do beaks! I don't do beaks! You don't do beaks. What happened with you and a bird? I kind of want to know, and I also feel kind of bad for you. That was the point where I did actually back off and let him pass because it was going to cause a clog with the group coming behind him, but I don't do beaks. That's a first. Uh, one that was rather disturbing that came through. As it got later in the evening, there was a very, very drunk woman who, after I jumped out and scared her, she paused and stared at me for a second, again, still not telling who's under this costume, just seeing all the stuff, and her, her words were quoted, Ooh, daddy, that's my kink. That's the point where I'm like, okay, someone get her out of here, I'm afraid, and I am the actor. <laughs> Y'all, control your drunk butts, okay? Seriously though, drunk people do sometimes give the funniest reactions, like, you're so honest, you're so honest with us. So that wraps up the experiences from my time as the plague doctor. Now, the next half of this story is about one of my personal favorite roles to fill at the haunt as the chainsaw maniac. Not many people are able to do this one because it's a very, very physical position. You have to carry a heavy, real functioning chainsaw. The, the chain is off, obviously, so you're not gonna cut anybody, but it's heavy, it's actually functioning, and you gotta run and chase people with it. So uh, I, I always do it a couple times because it's a lot of fun, but like even today, it's been like three days since I did it, and honestly, my muscles are just now starting to feel functional again. I. <laughs> I destroyed myself, but it, it was fun. It was fun. But you get some really good scares when you are chasing people with a real chainsaw. Let me tell you, that zest for survival really comes out. Obviously, you have a whole bunch of your standard responses where you rev the saw, people just scream and book it and run, and they're gone in a blink of an eye. You get countless of those, tons of those, easily hundreds of them in the night. But those are the standards, so not very noteworthy, so we'll move on. The first interesting scare I got my first night of doing the chainsaw was a little boy that I, I've never seen this happen before. This was a first for me. I scared him so bad, he ran out of his shoes. He ran out of his shoes. He took off running so fast and so hard, he went, the shoes literally flew off of his feet and he went running away in his socks and his dad was laughing so hard he was crying and could barely breathe while he was picking up his kids shoes and then following after him so <laughs> you glorious little warrior you kept going even without your shoes so you gonna survive a horror movie another notable scare from that same night uh first of the season i made somebody faint that was kind of scary for me personally because it was this girl and her mom. I didn't know this at the time. I just see people coming out. I'm hiding. I just see their backs coming out. They're both wearing hoodies so, with the hoods over their heads. So I can't tell who or what these people are. I just, I run out, I rev the chainsaw. And at first, I don't think there's any reaction because they keep walking at the exact same pace they were going. They don't even flinch. But about four steps in, this one of the per, one of the people in the hoods clutches their chest, falls to their knees, and then fully falls to the ground. I literally turned my saw off, put it on the ground. Me and the security guy out there ran forward to see if she was okay. I didn't know if it was like a granny who I just gave a freaking heart attack and killed. That was a moment of fear, but it turned out it was a younger girl and her mom was like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. She just does this a lot when she gets too scared. It's okay, she just needs a minute. Okay, good, because I legitimately worried that I might have actually given someone a heart attack and we were gonna need to call an ambulance and it was gonna be a really long night and I was gonna feel awful. Fortunately, it was just a fainting spell. I mean, I guess that is one way to react to horror, like a fainting goat. So moving on to the next night, I had even more scares because this was an even busier night. So the way that I actually chase people with the saw, there is one way you are supposed to go that takes you the direct way. And there's another way that th this haunt is literally set on a functional farm. The buildings it's in are for the haunt, but it's on a farm. 
And the sheer number of people that were running so hard in such a panic, they actually veered off the wrong way and started running off into the literal farm that it, we've had to like fetch them. No, 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 go the other way. You're gonna get lost out there. It's dark, please come back. I won't chase you anymore. We ended up having to like close, pull out one of the gates and like close it more properly and like have a security guy stand out in the corner. He's hidden in the shadow so you can't see him, but we had to have him stationed out there because people kept running away into the farm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm good at my job, okay? In another case, we had a girl come out and I was ready to verbally discipline her because this little stinker had been using a blaringly bright flashlight on her phone, blinding everybody in the haunt. And I revved the chainsaw and I chased after her and then she, she stopped running and I started approaching her. I turned the saw off and I was gonna tell her off for having her flashlight but I ended up changing my tune and softening up because the reason she stopped is she too dropped to her knees, but instead of fainting, she was sobbing hysterically, like big fat Ghibli tears, but not happy Ghibli tears, like I'm traumatized for life, I'm literally gonna die tears. And so I figured, you know what, that's, that's punishment enough, you, you're gonna have to deal with that. Just don't do it again. Also on the second night of doing the chainsaw, I should mention that this was a night that I got to do my own makeup and I had a ton of fun. I did kind of a Jeff the Killer inspired look, but if Jeff the Killer was older, you know, got captured and arrested, busted out of jail, is more grisly now, and gave up knives and instead, you know, went after chainsaws. But I, I put a lot of work in that makeup and I thought it turned out really nice. So it was, it was nice that I got a, a lot of feedback on it from customers. I mean, <laughs> that's an interesting first for me is I scared them, they ran screaming, but then about like five to 10 seconds later, I'd notice them pause at the end of the run, the, the strip they ran down. And then they'd like timidly come like wandering back up to me and they go, um, excuse, excuse me, your makeup just looks really cool. Can I look at it for a second? So, I mean, well, I don't really know how to react in that situation. I, I gotta try and stay in character, but just know, I appreciate that you appreciate the work I put in my makeup. So that was a little fun. So another thing that's always fun to see with scares like this is when you get the tough guys that are harder to scare, but rather than being like, I'm so tough, how dare you scare my girl, I'm gonna fight you. But if you're a tough guy with your girlfriend and you're like, hmm, she's scared, get her. Then we're cool. Had a couple guys that literally, I scared their girlfriend, they screamed and they ran down the runway. <laughs> and then, I kid you not, these guys, I saw them bear hug around their girlfriend, lift her up, and like teasingly walk them back over to me. And I'm like, ooh, you making this too easy. So I'd rev the saw and you can actually swing it down and it'll hit the gravel and make sparks and whoo, they don't like that. So that's, that's always fun, that was a good one. Then you got the super gigantor groups that go through. There was this one, I don't know if it was a family reunion or what, but there was probably a good 25 to 30 people. They just kept coming through, I'd scare them, and then they'd pool up, start waiting on the outside. I'm thinking, what is going on? And then I started to piece it together that they were all a group that came there together because I was gonna tell them off and get security to make them go because when people hang around there, they'll give away your scare. People will see them, you know, the, they might tell them or, you know, it, it could mess up the scare. But in this case, they were all sadistically waiting for the next parties of their group to get terrified. So they didn't give away my position at all. They just sat there waiting to watch. So that, that was interesting. Another big group that came through is it, I think it was, it might've been another Chinese exchange group. We get those a lot of the time big groups of exchange students because in the countries that they are from, they don't often have Halloween the same way we do if they have it at all. So they want to experience an American Halloween thing. Those poor dears are never ready for what they get. Oh my God, I feel the slightest bit of guilt because they are so scared, but oh, is it fun as an actor. Got a group of them, revved the chainsaw. They had genuine, genuine fear like, I don't think they realized there was no blade on the saw. They, they saw their own death. It was reflecting on their eyes and they cried and collapsed and ran and like crawled and ran like the, the horror protagonist that somehow can't run without falling down. I do, I do feel slightly bad, but then I also don't cause you paid for this, honey. I'm gonna give you what you paid for. 
But as I said at the beginning of the story, this was just two weekends in and there are many more ahead. So I'm sure I'm gonna have lots more interesting scares and experiences. I will, if I've got enough that are noteworthy, I will maybe make another story time with some of these scares for you guys if you guys would like that. But that is all I have time for for today's video. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this story time to a close. Thank you so much for listening. I will catch you all next time. And until then, remember, stay creepy.